work. And yes. uh, we also have Madam Barara here, who's principal of SPS Rajinder Nagar. Uh, mm -hmm. Principal of Mayur VR is also with us here. Uh, Priyanka Barara will be conducting the session. She'll be inaugurating the session along with you. And then uh, maybe uh, later on, the other principals will uh, agree, right? right? So warm welcome once again from the entire Salwan family to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So good morning, uh, Mr. Gupta. And uh, it's such a pleasure. Uh, I must say Padamshi, Mr. Gupta. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you with us today. And sir, um, as I mentioned in my uh, letter to you, uh, welcome letter, we are eight schools in Delhi and NCR. Yes, and what you can see is here, here is about seven schools. One is right. a very, very junior branch, only nursery KG, so I've exempted those children. Right. But we have we have two branches in Gurugram, one senior secondary school and one junior. One uh, one K-12 in uh, Mayur Vihar, uh, one, uh, one K-12, uh, three K-12s in Rajendranagar, where we are all housed, Rajendranagar. Yes, and one in Ghaziabad. So we are all over all over Delhi. We have about twelve thousand children, oh, wow. about 700, <laughs> 700 teachers. Okay. So that's that's a length and breadth. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I spent uh, fourteen years in Delhi, so I'm a little aware about Delhi. Before I moved to Pune, I spent fourteen years uh, in Delhi and wow. been to three hundred schools in Delhi, uh, doing lectures and demonstrations. So a little aware. I taught for five years in Mirambika uh, for a year at Sadar Patel. Okay. So, uh, generally aware about the uh, education scenario in Delhi. Uh, we certainly look forward to meeting you in person whenever you are in Delhi next. Sure, ma'am. Sure. <laughs> Priyanka, uh, I, and uh, our chairman would also like to join. Probably, um, he's, uh, if, if the courts allow him, he's an advocate, very prominent advocate. So, Is I'll it? send him the invite. The moment he comes, you'll come to know. And sure. I'll uh, introduce him. In the meantime, uh, Priyanka, ma'am, over to you. All yours. Good morning, Priyanka, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's a Good pleasure morning. to have you here this Thank morning. You. Thank you. And as uh, we watched your YouTube videos, and it's so interesting to hear you perform, hear you, you know, about the facts that you share and how you perform with the students. It's really enlightening. And in fact, we would, as Ms. Ma Madam Mukul said, that when you come to Delhi, we would like to have you over. We would also want you to have session with our teachers also. Sure, because I'll do that. You know, building on the curiosity, building on the inquisitiveness is the essence of learning science right, through discovery. Right. right. Isn't it? And, and, and what I will do is that I have written 24 books and I will send Mukul Ma'am a link. It's a Google Drive link. And please okay. share it with all the teachers and all the students. They can one click and they can download all my 24 books on science in English. I will oh, send that link to, Yes, I will, I will share that link. It's absolutely wonderful. Also, it's very important that children get interested in science for the sake of knowledge and not just for looking uh, placements in colleges and uh, lucrative employments, because this is the real love of science that we want to inculcate in our children, absolutely. because that is what leads them to becoming thinkers. Yes. And indeed. thinkers and, you know, scientists, because innovation happens only through this discovery and thinking. So this is the endeavor and we are all at all at all our schools, we are working towards this endeavor that our children promote science in this manner. Very nice. So, Wonderful. We yeah. still have five minutes to go and uh, we are really envious of you because we are under layers of clothes right now. <laughs> <laughs> layers and layers. I, I can imagine. You know, the pressure is pretty low here. Yes. But uh, you are at a better place, I must say. Yes. <laughs> Pune is pretty warm. As a matter of fact, uh, I will not mind, you know, putting the fan on <laughs> and on slow speed. It's a bit, uh, the sun is very, very warm over here right now. Yes. Mm. Maharashtra is, is, in fact, people are enjoying a good weather there. Yes. yes. Saying it's, it's, it's a very, very low winter for us and they, yes. they use fans. You know, but Pune is, uh, you know, tra traditionally, historically, uh, it's had a, you know, you can do with a half pullover uh, during the winters. And uh, it, it's a very mild kind of a winter. Even the summers are very mild. We don't have the kind of harsh summers which we experience in Delhi. You know, hot blasts of wind hitting your face. You don't have things like that in Pune. So it's a, it's a kind of a, traditionally, historically, retired people uh, found Pune, Bangalore, Nashik, very nice places to settle down. 
it was a pensioner's paradise. <laughs> but things have changed over the years. <laughs> so we have students from grades 6 to 11th here. Oh, wonderful. Oh, but that, that's just In fact, right. that's from grades 4. We mm -hmm. have students from grades 4 onwards. Okay, okay. You can see some of the little ones sitting here <laughs> with the name SJS Naraina. That's our primary school. Right. So these are the students from grades 4 and 5. Okay. And uh, then we have students from 6 to 12th in all, the, all other schools along with them. Okay. So we are very so looking forward to hearing from you and oh, seeing absolutely. what is yes. it that you would be no, showing. No, they, 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 they would enjoy toys. I think all children like toys and playing. Uh, a play is very, very serious business and all children like playing. They may not like to, you know, mug up things, but play is something which is which is inherent and innate to all children. Yes. It comes as a, you know, just just as a part of them when, yes. when they absorb something through play. That, yes. That's what matters. And this is exactly what we want them to <laughs> have, make it intrinsic as a part of their learning. That, that's exactly what we want. And I was very privileged in Pune. Yeah, I, I returned from Delhi to Pune in 2003. And okay. uh, inside the Pune University, there is a small institute called as the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. It was founded by a, by, a, by a very amazing man, a visionary, Professor Jayant Madlikar. He did his PhD from Cambridge and uh, Padam Vibhushan. Uh, he's one of all the, the most decorated astrophysicists in the country. And it was his dream that we offer a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics, but we must have a center for children, catch them young, imbue them with the love of science. <clears throat> so we started a children's science center, but I was privileged to work there for 11 years. That's why we did all these videos. We have 8,700 videos on YouTube in 15 languages, over 100 million viewers. And this all comes from a 400 square facility inside the government setup. So you can do good things even within the government. <laughs> of course, your, all that you need your, is an intent. Yes, intent, and, you know, stronger, yes. a willpower. So that's all we need. Yes, yes. So are we going live, Rashmi ma'am? Yes, ma'am, it is live. We are live. The only thing is that right now the creator must be coming. We'll be... Okay. Okay. Starting in now two oh. minutes. Yeah. No, I was just asking so that I begin with the introductions. Sure. Uh, no, write it uh, after one minute. I'll, I'll give you the cue. Okay. Right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sunita ma'am. 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 Good morning, Sunita Okay, I believe all the students ready? Yes. Give us a thumbs up, all of you. <laughs> Great. Uh, I would request all the hosts, those co who are co-hosts, not to admit people without, uh, I mean, we'll only admit the people there. All right, so we're about to start. Let's start. Thank you. A very good morning to everyone. I welcome all the Salvan students and the Salvan fraternity to this very insightful and exciting session that we will be having with Dr. Arvind Gupta, who has been a visiting scientist at Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. We are very fortunate to have his time with us and our students are going to go through a, an exciting learning, learning journey with Dr. Arvind Gupta in the next 60 minutes. Dr. Gupta graduated from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, 1975, with a degree in electrical engineering. He has written 15 books on science activities, translated 140 books in Hindi, and presented 125 films on science activities on the national television, Doordarshan. His first book, Matstick Models and Other Science Experiments, was translated in 12 Indian languages 
and sold over half a million copies. He has received several honors, including inaugural National Award for Science, Popularization Amongst Children, Distinguished Alumnus Award of IIT Kanpur in 2000, Indira Gandhi Award for Science Popularization 2008, and Third World Academy of Science Award 2010 for making science interesting for children. Currently, he works at Children's Science Center of Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Pune, India, and shares his passion for books and toys through his website. Sir, we are very thankful for, to you for, join, for giving us your very valuable time, and we so look forward to what you have brought to share with our students. And my dear students, as we delve into this session, I urge you to explore the realms of science. Science is the grand adventure where every experiment is a quest, every discovery is a triumph, and every failure is a stepping stone. Embrace the joy of exploration, for in the realm of discovery, curiosity is the compass that guides us, and fun is the fuel that propels us towards the unknown. So without any delay, I would request Dr. Arvind to take the session forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's my pleasure to uh, show some toys uh, with the teachers and children of the Salwan Public School. I was in Delhi for 14 years, and I've uh, been to 300 schools in Delhi. And... Uh, in my entire career, I've been to 3,000 schools. And the schools which I visit, I request them that please take me to your science lab. And most often what I saw was, uh, you see a very well-equipped science lab, but if you look at it perceptively, deeply, you'll find a grime of dust. All the burets, test tubes, all this fancy plasticware and glassware are locked in the cupboards. They are not meant for the children. They are meant for the inspectors. And which is such a shame because our kids are as clever as kids anywhere in the world. And given a chance, they would do great science. So what we thought was that we'd start with very simple things, humble things, which are accessible to children even outside the school. And give them a joy for science. Give them a good taste as to what good science is. I'm going to start with a few experiments and this is with a small straw, an ordinary plastic straw. I'm going to flatten one end and with the help of the scissors, I'm going to cut a kind of point. You can see now, this is like a, if you see from the side, it's like a beak, a bird's beak, open close. It's like a reed. I'm going to put this reed in my mouth and blow my lungs out. <laughs> It makes a very loud sound. You're not able to see how the sound is produced because the reed was hidden in my mouth. I'm going to keep the reed outside. This end is outside. And I'm going to suck in air now. If you look at this point, you'll find that the beak is opening and closing at a very fast rate. It's vibrating. And vibrations produce sound. So we don't really need to mug up that sound is produced by vibrations. We can actually experience it, we can hear it, we can see it vibrate. And this is done with a very simple thing like that. Now, if you take the same thing, this is the same flute, I have made two holes over here and they're inching towards the flute. This is my reed and... <laughs> You can play a few notes in this. And one great experiment is that the one which I made earlier, I'm going to keep blowing at it, keep making the sound, and with the scissors, keep cutting it, making it shorter and shorter. And something very amazing happens. We saw the longer the straw, the lower the pitch. And the shorter it becomes, the pitch becomes higher and higher and higher. And the shorter straw, 
a very, very high pitch. And often we say that we teach children, but trust me, and I've been into it for 40 years, every time children do come, come to our center, they do things differently. And there is a lot to learn from the, by teachers, from the children themselves, because children are new. They look at things very original, in a very original, new way. And this is what the children taught us. And I'm going to just share you what the children taught us. We have all made these are primordial sounds of a, of a child crying. We have made all these sounds as kids. I'm going to show you one or two more toys with straws. And now we could out. not hear that sound. Can you do it once again? Oh, uh, sure. Now, this is a small straw. and It's a very high pitch sound. And then you fold both your hands, cup both your hands, and... You can make all kinds of funny sounds with this. I think the children would do it much better than I'm able to do. Right. And this is another very nice toy. This is just a fat straw. A fat straw because you can see it much more clearly. And what we've done is that we just made a hole in the middle so that another straw can go in. And we've sealed both the ends. We've put blue tape. And then can you see a small hole over here? There's a small hole over here. I just nipped this, nipped this with the scissors, top right, bottom left. So di two diametrically opposite holes over here. That's it. And this green straw has a little hole over here. Why? Hole? If I shut this in and I blow, then air will come out at right angles. And now you see, I put this blowing straw inside, bring the spinner on top of it, and when I blow, It's a very nice spinner. Takes less than five minutes to make. If you note the direction of rotation. Now I'm going to flip it over. And the direction of rotation has changed. It also exemplifies the Newton's third law of motion. Every action is an equal and opposite reaction. When I blow, air comes out from this jet, this small hole over here, and it kicks it in the opposite direction. Air comes out from here and kicks it. It gets a torque like that. So this is a very, very nice spin out. Well, I'm going to show you one more very simple experiment with the straw. This is a fat straw. You can call it a lassi straw. Hmm? And what we've done is we've just made three V-cuts. You can see the V-cuts, slightly deep, four V-cuts over here. Then taken a piece of thread, woven it through the straw, taken it out, you can see a knot over here, and put a tape over here. So the thread is tied on the top. And now you see, if I just pull the thread, there it goes. It just simulates, it just simulates my fingertip. It's like a robotic finger. Very simple, very doable, cost very little money. Now, we were very sure that whatever we do should help the poorest child in the world. In our country, certainly, but all over the world. There are poor children who don't have access to good science, and they should be able to enjoy the, the, the joy of science by experiments like this, by play. We don't call them science experiments. We call them toys. Because children, the horrendous way they've been taught maths and science in schools, it gives them a distaste for life for these very beautiful subjects. But all children like to play. So we call them toys from trash. Because irrespective of whether children are inside school or outside it, all children want to play. And play is very serious business. There is too much of emphasis in our country on learning, on studying, on cracking that JE or NEET. Very little on play. We learn, if it's not fun, it is not learning. Uh, you may, you know, there, there is a very, in the South, something called a centum. You get 100% in maths. Uh, but children who get 100% hardly understand anything. That's the sad part of it. 
you can crack a very nice exam without understanding anything, which is such a shame. So I'm going to show you a very, very, here is a piece of square paper, just a square paper and just fold it into a triangle and give it another. Now this is a small triangle. This looks like letter V, V for van, V for victory. This also looks like the ears of an animal. Now I'm going to take this and no scissors. I'm just going to tear two long and slightly rounded ears. Fold this to the front and fold this to the back. That's a 10 second toy and this is Mr. Rabbit. You can see this rabbit's mouth, two long ears, front legs, this is the body and this is the tail. Now I hold the legs just below the body, not on the body, just below it. And then I grab the tail and I push the tail forwards and backwards. And now this is a 10 second toy, which always brings a smile on the face of a child. Children love it. When I was a little child, I used to make a toy like this. So I still remember it. Very amazing. It's a flapping ear rabbit. And what you do is, if you take another square like that, and this is very well documented. In less than a minute, you can make this flapping bird. This has been documented. Children in Japan have been making this bird for the last 300 years. Come, you know, if Diwali comes in our, in our country, uh, people uh, uh, blow up firecrackers, they have sweets, they pray. And in Japan, well, if they have a festival, they eat rice cakes and the whole family then sits down to fold paper, all done. And because this art has been dovetailed into their religious rituals, it has remained intact for 300 years. Now this is the gem, crayon. Just a square piece of paper, no scissors, no glue. This is absolutely worth learning. They've been making for 300 years. And what we did was we just took the same, same, paper bird, and what we did was, we just put a little fan on the tail. Can you see the fan? Now this is a little paper helicopter, and this is a refill inside which there is a paper pin which is spinning. So the pin becomes the axle, and the refill is a bush bearing, and here is a fan-tailed bird. This is a fan-tailed bird. I'm just going to to see this. Very amazing. So don't throw away old refills. You could make 10 birds with simple refill lines. You can't buy this online. You can't buy this on Amazon. You can only buy stupid toys on Amazon. Clever toys are always which you make with your head. About 80 years back, Ramina Tagore said, that the best toy in the world is which the child completes. The child should be making the toy. It may not look very nice. It may not be very aesthetic. YouTube, YouTube is on. But because the child has made it, it is the best toy for the child. <coughs> this is another one. You can just see this. It's a kind of a drummer. You can see this drummer. And this is the backside. What is, this is a fruity straw. This is a broomstick from a coconut broom and just a thin card sheet. And children love toys which have a dynamic element in them. You know, sitting ducks are static toys. Children get bored with them very easily. But something which spins, something which makes sound, something which flies, something which has some action in it, something which is dynamic. Children love those toys. Very simple to make. These are ordinary materials around us. Nothing very fancy about it. I will show you another paper toy. Now this is made from, if you have a A4 size paper, this is quarter. And we make two arrows, pull this into half, and then again, you can see this, bring both the ears together. And 
give it a little push. Now there'll be a small depression here. You can see the small depression. And this is like the spring. This is the key to the toy. And look at this. Simple toys. All these fancy things, they disappear. Most, many of our institutions have become graveyards for high-tech equipment because people buy them, they've not made them, they don't even know how to repair them and they become graveyards. But this is, children can reinvent. Every generation makes these great toys and leaves it behind the public domain, enriches it so that others can make them. So they have been honed and they've been practiced for generations. Uh, sir, these toys are looking very interesting. Yes. If we could get some background <laughs> for the principles that they're working on and the principles that they can relate to. So, I think I think you're right. I think I've been asked this question many, many times. All right. But my, my purpose in life is to children enjoy them. Science can wait. The principles can wait as they grow up. Right? Not every toy needs a principle. I'll give you one example. <coughs> now here is a here is a kind of a spring which I made. Here, this is a spring. And this is some wire, binding wire. I wove it on a sketch pen. And then if I pull this out, I get a spring like this. <coughs> on this, I put some <laughs> the children have loved this toy. <laughs> now it defies any principle, but all children love. <laughs> Take, for instance, this toy. Now, this looks like a skeleton. <laughs> if you look at the back side and look clearly, what you would see that these are staples, ordinary staples, one in the arm, one in the shoulder. And that's why it can move. Look at this carefully. A staple. How many degrees of motions are possible? You can probably do, you can do lots of yoga poses. <laughs> With this. Very simple to make. Card sheet and a stapler. See it clear? Another one. This is a, a swan fly. This one is a very thin, fruity straw. This one is a fat straw. The fat straw is split and one is stuck on one wing, the other is stuck on the other. And Like you saw the rabbit earlier, uh, this is a Chinese girl. I was in Hong Kong for a month, and this is, uh, she taught me. She said, so you've taught us many things, and this is, I've never seen this document. I documented crediting her in one of my books. This is just a square, and in two minutes, you make this beautiful. You simulate the opening and closing of the wings of a butterfly. One very wonderful toy. This is the simplest flying toy in the world. You can see that there's a little strip of paper and the newspaper is the ideal material for it because it's very light. You can see that I've made two marks over here and made cuts, the small cuts over here. And then now I'm going to interlock these cuts.
After interlocking, what do I make? Well, it looks like a fish. And a fish is supposed to swim in water. But this is an amazing flying fish. If you just throw it from the top, stand up, throw it up, it will come twirling down. Very amazing. The simplest flying object. Now you may ask me, what is the principle behind this? I can tell you that the aerodynamics behind this is very complex. Sometimes simple toys, they define definition. It's because there's so many complex principles working, but it's fascinating to see a little strip of paper. Someone must have seen a eucalyptus leaf fall from a tree and come twirling down. And that might have given him an idea. So this is a toy like that. See this one, this is like one Mr. Acrobat. You can see the head and the body are doubled. And these are these, this is what it does. If I, if I twirl the stick, now these are all just with a needle and thread. These are like hinges, one knot here, one knot here, two knots. And but this is doubled over here, so the shoulder goes between the two layers. They're two layers. The head and the body are two layers. So this is, if you spit something, it tends to fly out. Now, this is the principle of centrifugal force. And children intuitively learn about centrifugal force through this toy. The definitions, the formulas can come much later. But just intuitive feel, in fun, while playing, you learn so many things. I think a good school is one which gives the children lots of experiences, not just bookish knowledge, but a lot of experiences, different kinds of materials, different kinds of things, and converting. An enlightened school would be one which would have an activity center, not just a biology lab or a physics lab or a chemistry lab or a maths lab. Those are mandatory by the CBSC, but an activity center where class one, two students who still are not far away from science can come and make things with their hands and get the joy and convert the world's trash into joyous toys. They would have newspapers, for instance, newspapers, old newspapers. This is the cheapest paper you can buy in Raddi. We make 20 caps out of a newspaper. Now, this is Sachin Tendulkar's cricket cap. We are a cricket, cricket here in country. We are very good at cricket. And if one, this is half a newspaper. And if one child makes a cricket cap, cap, well, the whole school, the whole class wants to make this. And it fits in very beautifully into the children's head. The nice thing about this cap is that when you're not using it, you can. And I usually carry it in my pocket. When I go out in the sun without any hair on my head, it's very harsh. So I put on this cap. Uh, another cap is this is a again half a newspaper. And you make a this is a national cap, a Gandhi cap, or a Nehru cap, right? You make a cap like this. So 20 different caps. And if children make these caps, it's like a geometry laboratory. They've been talked about so many polygons and angles, and but they're actually folding these polygons and seeing patterns in them. Science is all about looking at patterns. Science and maths is all about looking at patterns. And <clears throat> there's a great story from the life of uh, the German mathematician Friedrich Gauss. This is about 400 years back. Now, Gauss was a Gauss was in class two at that time. And the teacher said, at that time, there was very little paper available. So children wrote on slates with a piece of chalk. The teacher said, write from one to 100. But that was not too much of a challenge for class two students. One, two, three, four, they wrote from one to 100. And then the teacher said, add them up. Now the children immediately, one plus two is three, three plus three is six, six plus four is 10, 10 plus five is 15, 15 plus six is 21. But as they went further, the numbers became bigger, two digit numbers. And initially 
They're going very fast, but then they slowed down. Gauze just looked at the numbers. He admired them. The first one is one, two, three, four, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. He said the first is one, last is 100. One plus 100 is 101. Two plus 99 is 101. Three plus 98 is 101. Four plus 97 is 101. He said, I reckon there'd be 50 pairs in 100 numbers. So there'd be 50 into 101, 5,050. That is the answer. He became one of the greatest mathematicians. You know, all these normal curves, Gaussian curves, are named after Frederick Gauss. So science is not an ability to just mug up and throw up, but just to look at the beauty, admire the beauty in the world. There is deep aesthetics in science. And I'll give you one example of this. This is the calendar. Now, this is some calendar. April 2015, you look at, you just take, we'll take just four digits, four squares, cross. Three plus 11 is 14. 10 plus four is 14. Five plus 13 is 18. Six plus 12 is 18. Well, we never noticed this. Let's go down to the other, some other calendar. 8 plus 16 is 24. 9 plus 15 is 24. Did you ever notice this? This is right there in the calendar. Let's become slightly more adventurous, right? Let's take a, let's take a three by three matrix. How many digits are there? Nine, nine numbers there. Now, three plus 19 is 22, which is double of 11. 5 plus 17 is 22, which is double of 11. 4 plus 18 is 22, which is double of 11. 10 plus 12 is 22, which is double of 11. If I were to add all these numbers, well, 11 is their average into 9. 11 into 9 is 99. This is number of all these numbers. Look at another beautiful thing. Look at this column standing 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, what is the sum of all these numbers? I just look at them. I said 56. How did I do it? Look at this. A row. 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. What is the sum of all these? <coughs> this row, it is 75. How did I do it? If the bench stays on the first, the second would come on the seventh. 3rd of the 15th, 22nd, 29th, seven days apart. It's an arithmetic progression with the difference of seven. And the, there is a middle number, which is the average. So 15 into five is 75. Over here, there's seven days in a week. Luckily, we have a middle day, eight. How many days? Eight is the average. Five plus 11 is 16, which is double of eight. Six plus 10 is 16, which is double of eight. Seven plus nine is 16, which is double of eight. So looking at patterns, there's a beautiful book by my, my mentor, P.K. Srinivasan, number one with the calendar. We got that translated into Hindi, into Marathi, into Kannada, into Telugu, several Indian languages. Amazing, world-class book. Now we can become slightly more adventurous. Look at this. This matrix, the seven days in a week and four weeks. How many numbers? 28 digits. 3 plus 30, 33. 24 plus 9, 33. 4 plus 29, 33. 8 plus 25, 33. 6 plus 27, 33. 13 plus 20, 33. Well, 14 pairs into 33. That is the sum of all this. So this is why stuff your brain with unnecessary junk. Science in maths is the ability to look at patterns. And if you find new patterns, great patterns, that's what great scientists and mathematicians do. Unfortunately, we don't teach them. We teach them only to crack, knead, and help these coaching institutes. That's what we do. But we don't give our children a taste of what good science is. I'll show you, this, this is something very wonderful. This is called as a 14-page Unending book. One, two, three, four. 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Fourteenth is the last page and the book starts over again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is just two squares of paper. Two minutes to make this. And every child has a favorite story. And they can divide the story into 14 parts and illustrate each page. So we have a dynamic picture book. Their own favorite story they have illustrated. It will be a unique book of its kind in the whole world. That's what. <clears throat> Look at this model. This is 1928. It was designed by Arthur Stone at Harvard. He was a young mathematician. It's going to complete 100 years now. Look at this piece of paper. It can just keep rotating. It's amazing that paper can rotate like this. What all pictures you see? You see butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles, butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. We see four pictures coming in a sequence, one after the other. And the four pictures, well, butterflies, insects. Insects are eaten by the frogs. Frogs are eaten by the snakes. Snakes are eaten by the eagles. It's like a food chain. This is, we teach all fourth class children about the food chain. It's such an amazing thing. And how do you make it? Well, very, very simple. If you just have a piece of A4 size paper, it's A4 size. If it's printed on one side, the printed side get camouflaged. You just need a scale, a paper, and a pencil. And in three minutes, you fold this. No glue, no scissors in this. Okay. This is called as a flexible. And this is done in 19, 1928. It's, it's going to be soon, a hundred years before the flexible. Martin Gardner has uh, documented this. Martin Gardner was a great documenter of maths puzzles. He wrote a column for the Scientific American for 25 years. And there's a whole chapter on flexigans in that. Very amazing. And this is just not limited to science. Suppose he was a history teacher. How you make history alive. Look at the Maratha period. Who was the first Maratha king? Write the name, draw a picture, put the date. Who ascended the throne next? Who came to the, who came next? Who came next? Do this with the Mughal period. And you would make history much more interesting to children. You can keep flipping it. This is almost a thousand times, then this paper is going to tear, then you make another one. If you have a small piece of paper, you can make a small flex. Very amazing. And you can make very nice. Come Diwali. Happy Diwali grandma. Draw some diyas, draw some crackers, draw some flowers, and give it to your grandma, and she'll be twiddling her thumbs. You can't buy this on Amazon. I challenge you. This is not online. This is not for the richy rich alone. If you're clever, you can make clever things. Absolutely. The unique things. Wonderful. Flexible. Well, now I'm going to show you something which uh, I used to work in a factory and I took. Now, this is cycle value. In 1978, I used to work with Tata Motors in Pune. And I was fed up of this mass production line. And I took a year off to go to a program called as a Hushingabad Science Teaching Program. It was a historic program. How to, how to teach village kids who don't have a laboratory science. Very challenging. And what I found over there was in a bicycle shop. This is a cycle valve tube where you actually pump in a bicycle. You put a piece of this. This is sold by weight. You can buy a 100 gram packet of cycle value for 14 piece. And here is, you take a small piece and you put two matchsticks inside and they go very snugly in. So you make a joint, it's like a joint of two. You can teach, what angle is this? A cute angle. What angle is this? Right angle, obtuse angle, straight angle, reflex angle, right from zero to three degrees. It's a flexible coupling, right? If you have a motor and a machine, they need not be joined in a straight line. You could join them at an angle like this. Very nice. 
Now, if you have three of these, if you take three bits of cycle value, then you can make a very nice triangle. And because matchboxes are made in a factory, uh, they are this matched to the same length. So what you make is a equilateral triangle. How much is each angle? Each angle is sixty degrees. Children can get a feel for it, right? Now, similarly, if you put four together, you make a square. And you see that the square is very wobbly. If you just push it, it distorts into a rhombus. Barfi ban jata. Patang patang ban jata. Patang ban jata. That's what happens. You can make a pentagon, huh? but if you just pull this pentagon, it becomes a boat-shaped trapezium. It becomes a house shape, but again, very, very shaky and wobbly. You can make a hexagon. Now this hexagon, if you just pull this out, it becomes a rectangle. If you give it a push, this becomes a parallelogram. But this is like an amoeba, which is constantly changing its outer profile. Very, very flexible. But triangle, you can't do anything to a triangle. All the other polygons are very, very shaky. Huh? This, apart from the triangle. Triangle is the only rigid shape. Why are bridges? When you make a house, well, you can't make a house with a square truss. You can't make a house with a pentagonal truss because if you put tiles on top, it's just going to go down. It's going to collapse. So all houses are made with a truss, which is a triangle. Because triangles are the strongest polygons. All bridges are made of triangles. So children could actually feel this. Similarly, now these were, if you take a joint of two like this, Make a hole in this and put a third man stick. And you make a T joint. It's a joint of three. And if you had the triangle, you could poke three holes in the three vertices of the triangle. And you can put this tripod inside. And what you would make? Your very lovely tetrahedron. No glue. No glue at all. You just need a needle or a thorn to make these holes. And we know the tetrahedron. All bonding, chemical bonding is essentially tetrahedra. If it's a cubical bonding, there's a two interlock tetrahedra. Now this is, if you just take four marbles, can you see? One, two, three, and one on the top. Four marbles, three and one on the top. Then you make the molecular structure of methane, CH4, four atoms of the hydrogen at the four apexes of the tetrahedron, and methane is a little carbon atom. So school-going children could make molecular structures. They don't need to buy. And what you make with your hands? Similarly, we can make a joint of six and a joint of four with this. Three, three bits of cycle valve tube, you make a joint of six, you make a joint of four. And with these, suppose you make a cube. This is a cube and you make a pyramid. On the top, you can see there is a joint of four at the top. This is the joint of four. You can put the pyramid on top of the cube and you make a little house. If you take the prism, for instance, two triangles, take the prism, put the tetrahedron right on top, it looks like a little temple. And finally, with, you make joints of six, but use only five, and you make it icosahedron. Cycle valve tube, which is available. If one thing which is made in roads and villages is the bicycle. So the bicycle valve marches down to Gharme Chula Najan. We're not talking about fancy things, right? And you make an icosahedron. The nice thing is children can flex this. This becomes a radom. Huh? This becomes like a you can play with them like this. And unless children play with it. It's only during play that they discover many, many problems. This is the Maths to the Cat. This is my first book, which got into 12 Indian languages and now translated six years back into Chinese, right? So this is the very, very, very simple idea. And this emerged from a village where I was working. It is not a copy and paste idea. Now, we're going to show, I'm going to show you some things that excite me very much. And this is some stuff to do with matchboxes. Now, here is an empty matchbox. Now, the Vikram Sarabhai Community Science Center was set up in 66 by Vikram Sarabhai in Ahmedabad. 
He was the architect of our space program. It was one of the most creative centers, science centers in the country, Vikram Sarabhai Community Science Center. And 50 years back, this is the experiment they gave to children. Every child was given an empty matchbox, same brand, same size. And then the children were given a challenge. You get a week's time, go back home and fill this drawer with as many things as you can, but only one specimen of each thing. You can't duplicate it. And anyone, the one who packs in the maximum number of things in the matchbox gets a prize. It's children understood this very easily. I guess. They went back home, put a little rubber, put a little sharpener, and well, only two things can go on. Then one girl went, mother was kitchen, cooking some poha, something in the kitchen. She took one mustard seed, put one jeera, cumin seed, take mirchika beej, hmm? red chili seed, one grain of rice, one moong ki dal, one strand of hair, <laughs> one small rubber band, hmm? one sliver of thread. And after a week, 50 children in the class gathered. And the teacher asked, lift your matchboxes and shake them. The kids shook them vigorously. Some matchboxes made sound and they were out. No, you don't stand a chance. If they, why is there sound? Because there's some spaces vacant. Things can move. That's why they produce sound. And trust me, one child was able to pack in 150 things into a matchbox. This experiment is not alien. This was done in our country at one of the most creative science centers in our country 50 years back. How many things are matchbox? Very amazing experiment. I'm going to show you another very nice. This is, this is a matchbox and a piece of thread. And I move it in a very special manner. I'll show you that. And this train keeps moving. If I move my hand, the train moves like this. Does it go back? No, I've got to pull it back. Matchbox train. I can keep it vertically like this. If I stick a picture of a lizard on this, it look like a lizard climbing the wall. I can stick a picture of a rabbit. It will look like a rabbit going hop, hop, hop. Now every child can use her own creativity to make a different picture. Now this is just an empty matchbox and a piece of string. And you can see we make four holes. One is in the strike surface in the center. Take a long needle and weave it diagonally. It will come out through this hole, first hole, diagonally, along with the thread. Then poke it here and take it out here. I'll open the matchbox and show you that both the threads are going at a slant. And that's what makes this toy work. Such a simple toy, right? The children who never go to school, who live in slums, they don't have the opportunity which your children have, right? Can also enjoy this toy, right? This is another one. What we've done is, Here's a matchbox. And what we've done is we've taken two paper clips. This is a paper clip and one paper clip. And the paper clips are popping two millimeters outside. We've taped them so that they don't slide. And then in this, we have woven up. What have we woven? A thread. And now I put the drawer inside. And now the drawer's outside, so this side is very heavy. Now see this. I hold it like this. It comes down, slithering down, as if it's shaking its tail. I can invert this, and it will stop and start again. Now this is based on friction and gravity. These are the two forces working.
of this experiment, there's a very nice book by Sudarshan Khanna, The Joy of Making Indian Toys. Sudarshan worked at the National Institute of Design for 40 years. And he's the toy man in the country. He collated all our traditional toys and put them in a book, The Joy of Making Indian Toys, which has been published by the National Book Trust. I translated, I was privileged to translate that book into Hindi with the National Book Trust. Sundar Salone Bharti Khilone. Usi kitab ka ye khilone. Now you take a, ye jhalu ki seek hai, a broomstick from a coconut front, a long one and a short one. And you tie them very tight. You can see the short stick is slightly bent down, just like the Simu 4 railway arm. It is not at right angles. And then probably this toy came out from Kerala because we have India has 7,000 kilometers of coastline. Hmm? And uh, so children take a baby coconut and they would poke it inside. Where I live, there are no coconut trees. So I took a piece of rubber slipper. You can take an eraser and some little weight down below. But then I perch it in my index finger and I spin it. And this is like the Sudarshan Chakra. Now centrifugal force, centripetal force are big words for literature. Ek kaan se sunte, dusar kaan se kachra peti me chale ga. Because they have no experience. And, and the teachers who teach them know it not. Because they have come from a pretty corrupted system where they have never done experiments with their own hands. And they themselves don't know the joy of learning by doing. But this is something which the poorest child can afford. Get a feel for centrifugal force. What a nice. We, must, we need to get these toys into our mainstream schools. And this would take the level of our science teaching to a different level. It would make it fun for our children. Right? Now, I'll show you two toys where we think that... Uh, now, this is one which gave us a lot of... This is a levitating pencil. There are four magnets. You can see some magnets over here. Four magnets here. And now first I'll show you what it does. Now this pencil is levitating. It's hanging in the air. Am I chanting a mantra? No. Science is not about mantras. It's because of the forces, magnetic forces. And I can give it a twirl. If I give it a twirl, you can see this pencil is turning. And it's hanging in the air. Now, there are four magnets here and two magnets over here. And what happens over here is the front magnets must attract, which means they're opposite poles. That's why they attract. One is north, the other is south. So opposite poles. In the back magnets, they are similar poles. You can see similar poles. So this pushing, I can't put this away, it's pushing. It's throwing it away. So that's what is. These magnets repel. These rare magnets repel. These are trapped. So, if I put my finger over here, you can see. I'm balancing on my finger. I can feel the force it's exerting on my finger. And I can give it a twirl. Now what I do is I take a small CD. This is not a piece of glass, but this is plastic, which I can cut very easily. And there you are. All over the world, there is maglev trains, magnetic levitation trains. This costs 10 rupees, right? Very, very poor children can make them. And what an amazing toy. When children hear about magnetic trains, magnetic levitation trains, they get a feel for them. If you go to Beijing, the, the airports are usually far away from the city center, 70 kilometers. In 10 minutes, you're inside the city because zipping at four or 500 kilometers an hour. And it's a very, because there are no tracks. It, it levitates over the tracks. It's a very, very smooth ride. So this is, so the children from a a lakh children in my city of Pune have made this model. But that's the greatness of my city. 
Now, this is this is the children from the municipal school. Now, this is a bicycle spoke. Okay. This is from a plastic bottle. I've cut a hoop. There are, there are thousands of what plastic bottles which are littering at times, our roads, right? Our gardens. I've just made two holes over here. Two holes. I poked this over here, put two magnets inside. These are ring magnets. Bless them. Now give it a drop. These, this model has been designed by children of a municipal school, government school, who have access, very poor children, have access to very few resources. Often we say that children are consumers of knowledge. Teachers know it all, and their task is to pour knowledge into the kids. I think kids can create original knowledge, give them a chance. We never give them a chance. We want them to mug up and spit out in the same words. That's why they're not original. Given a chance, given space, kids answer questions which is difficult for us teachers to answer. They ask very different questions. And as human beings, we can humbly say, we don't know the answers. And let's figure it out ourselves. And the other is, of course, you take the, you take, you take a cup, this is a paper cup. You just made a hole in the center and put one magnet inside and another magnet outside. So you can see that there is a there is a hole. You can see a hole. Two magnets, one inside, one outside. And they just take the bicycle spoke and put it in this. And just let it go. But there is no reference to in literature to a toy like this. Children of class seven of the municipal school are capable of creating original knowledge. It is not. Now this is a, a toy which has given me immense delight. It's a hundred year old toy. I've been to 3000 schools and trust me, schools are boring from the word go. I've been to 3000 schools worked in 25 countries. Now this is a toy which is the darling of every physicist. It's a hundred year old toy. Take a pencil with a rubber on one end. You make, make a few notches over here. Can you see these notches? V notches. Take a card sheet, make a hole in the, make a crisscross to mark the center, make a big hole in the center. Put the pin inside. You can see this fan can move. This white rubber is to like a stopper. Otherwise the fan will fly. I have the ball pen refill in my hand. If I hold this and I rub this, something amazing happens. This is a pencil spinner. It has quizzed scientists for a hundred years. Six major research papers in this sort. The NCRT does not know the answer. This is non-trivial physics. Please understand. That's why it's not in the NCRT textbook. They don't know the answer. And you don't need a $6 billion Hadron Collider for this. Every child, schools are boring, I said. And children who are clever, if they want to survive school, they must make a toy like that. Whenever the teacher is looking at them, they should be writing. Whenever the teacher's back is towards them, all kids should be playing with a toy like this. God sent children on earth to play. Play is very serious business. It is not trivial. Without play, there is no learning. Without fun, there is no learning. Amazing. Hundred year old toy. I'm going to show you two more things. And this is my favorite. It's a simple electric motor. There are many children in class seventh or eighth, they taught about the electric motor. The rare is a child who ever makes electric motor. Hamari Garome kitni jage motor, punke motor, fridge kinder motor. Washing machine my motor, and mixing my motor. We use a dozen motors in our own house, but we don't know how to make one. Now, this is a battery, 1.5 volt ordinary battery. Two magnets, you can see. A, a, I can stick my, my scissors to the magnet. Two safety pins, long ones, and an old cycle tube. The cycle tube keeps 
the safety pins in contact with the plus and minus. 1.5 volts across them. And I'm just going to make a little coil and put them here. Oop. Simplest motor. If you have the battery, 10 rupees for making it. It's not a rich man's game. Imagine how much would the children, children. Faraday's laws of induction, right? Children would be, once they make a motor model like this, they will understand the theory much better. I can promise you that. There will be a gleam in the bachuki ahome chamakaiki if they make a motor like this. And this is what real science is. The rest is all hoax and fake. I'm going to show you one more model. And this is D. Now, this is an empty syringe. It's a 10 ml syringe. We have nothing to do with the needle. You just throw it away. Now, this is a cylindrical barrel. Now, these two, these are strong magnets. These are new dynamic magnets. And they're about 20 rupees each. Two of them. And they're so strong, I can't separate them. They're so powerful. And that's what makes the model work. I put them in the syringe. Can you see them go back and forth? I put a piece of rubber over here. And over here, this is insulated copper wire, 36 gauge. How many turns? A thousand turns. And I take the two ends, scrape them, and I put a LED, small bulb. Now, if I shake this, the magnets will shake inside the coin. It's like a moving magnetic field, a very powerful magnetic field. Lines of forces are cut, and there is a EMF generated in the coin. And you see this. Can you see the LED light up? Need a generator. Right. If you have a thousand megawatt generator, huh? it works on the same principle as this. The principles don't change. Do the scale may change, right? Every child, imagine a girl in a poor village in UP where there are many hours of power cut. Making a model like this, it's truly empowering. Today, I light up a small LED. Tomorrow, I light up my village. That's the kind of empowerment these models give. In the end, I'll show you one model which I really love. Now, this, you can, can you recognize this? This is a kind of a, a plastic woven sack. This is fertilizer, gehu, chawal. Kisi bhi aapko dukaan ke upar ye mil jayega. Fateve. Aur fateve to raase mein pade rehte. We just took 15 strands from this and tied a knot. These are plastic strands from a woven sack. And this is the best season because it's winters and it's dry weather. Right? Now, this is the best experiment on static electricity I've ever seen in my life. Look at this. I'm just going to rub these. And can you see these strands? What has happened? They're repelling each other. If I put my hand, can you see? A strand is... Our class books, our textbooks are full of the gold leaf electroscope. When I was a child, I queued. 50, 60 years back, I, stay, I still read the same stupid thing in my textbooks. In thousands of schools I've visited, I've never seen a gold leaf electroscope ever working. This is something. If any child brings a torn sack in the school, the whole school can take the experiment back to school. And this is what real science is. In the end, I'm going to tell you a little story I'm very fond of. And I'm going to end with this. Now, this is a skeleton which I think I like it very much. This is, if you say, if you have an A4 size paper, A4 size paper, half of this paper, just half. A glue and what else? A scissors. And you make a scale model of a skeleton. This is the skull. This is the rib cage. This is the pelvis. Tibia, tibia, there are 200 odd bones in a human body. Fourth class children can just cut. With this, you can make two of these. 
not only just not confined to a biology project. Look at the skeleton. Tell me it's a Hindu, a Muslim, a Sikh, a Christian. We have so much poison in our head, so much hate in our brains, right? The Almighty made us all together. We made these categories, these stupid categories of hate. Very nice. Not just confined to science, but to probe much deeper questions. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to tell you. This is called as the captain's hat story. Now, this story is told with the newspaper. I've got a newspaper in front of him, me. Now, Captain Topi Shankar, with Pani ke jahaz ke kaptats. And you know, a, a ship goes very slowly, unlike an aircraft. It goes very, very slowly. Now, the first few days, the passengers enjoy the ship journey very much. But after a few days, they all get bored. Now, they don't see a patch of land, they so don't see a tree, so they become seasick, that's the term. Topi Shankar was a very clever cat. He saw that all the passengers getting bored. He invited them all on the deck. I'll provide you with good food and drinks. <coughs> Topi Shankar had a suitcase with different kinds of caps. And every day he would join the party wearing a different cap. The first day it would be a huge umbrella cap. At night, the umbrella cap would protect him from the sun and the scorching sun and the rain. At night, when the passengers would go to sleep, Topi Shankar would take the same cap and give it one more fold. And second day, he would be wearing a fireman's cap. You know, firemen wear a designer cap. There's a shoot at the back. Because if somebody go into a in a burning house, and if some rubble falls on the top, it must protect us. So there is a little shoot at the back to protect the spinal cord. It's a designer cap. First is the umbrella cap, second is the fireman's cap, and out there he would wear a shikari cap. It's an explorer's cap, it's an adventurer's cap, it's a shikari cap. Three caps. And the third night, he would give it two more folds, and the fourth night, He'd be wearing a police cap. I live in Pune, where we have the Film and Television Institute and the Film Archives. And Mumbai, the Bollywood, is not too far off, a hundred miles from my city. And if you've seen any of our Bollywood films, and if you ever seen a cop, a policeman, the policeman always wears a cap like this, a Maharashtrian policeman. And in Marathi, this is called as a Pandu cap. This, this word is being catapulted to international glory. The Pandu cap. So four caps. First is a huge umbrella cap. Second is the fireman's cap. Third is a shikari cap. And fourth is a pandu cap. And we must not forget that Topi Shankar, after all, he was a captain of a ship. So that's a ship. And everyone was enjoying the journey very much. And suddenly there's a storm. Karli badli chhajate. Dhuwa dhar barish hoti. Pa pani uchi lehrel uthe hai. Ap jahaz bhi hichkole khane lagta hai. अब एक लहर आती है और जहाज को पीछे से थपेड़ा मारती है पिछला हिस्सा जहाज का टूट जाता है अब सारे पैसेंजर परेशान हो जाते हैं उनके चेहरे मुरझा जाते हैं चेहरे पे हवाइए छूट जाती है पसीना आने लगता है कि हम तो पिकनिक के लिए आए थे और यहां तो बिल्कुल तूफान ने जहाज को तोड़ दिया एक और लहर आती है और जहाज के अगले हिस्से को एक थपेड़ा मारती है जहाज के दो टुकड़े हो this triangular portion of ship is called as a bridge. Now, in Kurdu, it's called a bridge. A third wave comes and hits the bridge and knocks it down. Now, when the ship is broken, the ship is broken, and the ship is broken, and the ship is broken, संदूक जिसपे सब बात टोपियां थी डूब जाता है टोपी शंकर लुट जाता है कुछ नहीं बचता उसके पास में क्या बचती है वन लाइफ जैकेट एक फटी पुरानी बनिया थैंक यू वेरी मच आई होप यू एंजॉय दिस सेशन
Thank you very much with you. And I hope that you'll go back and make some of these toys. I will soon share a Google Drive link with uh, Mukul Man, where with one click, you can download all my 24 books and have a good time in science. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gupta, and it was really amazing. You, you, you know, took us to our own childhood, and I Thank think you. somewhere this generation is not, uh, you know, they don't have that kind of knowledge of the kind of toys we used to use in our childhood. And I was really thinking that we didn't have to, you know, uh, get any special session from anyone to get these toys <laughs> done because it was there in the school's ecosystem or itself. And maybe, you know, in our neighborhood. But I think these things are now going away. So I would request Sunita, ma'am, uh, yeah. to take it forward uh, with the students if they have any queries. Any questions, uh, you can raise your hands uh, on your respective system. Yes, children. I think Narayana has raised the hand. Uh, IT team, kindly unmute Narayana. So we, we really enjoyed this workshop in which you explained that complex things. So if they like uh, arithmetic calendar or the complex joints of the human body just by making paper skeletons, how you showed us the chain by, by uh, folding a piece of paper and making drawings on it. And my personal favorite was the hexagonal toy while folding the paper on the food chain because we can also use it to make a timeline, gift cards, even our own story, etc. So I have a question that do you have any toy that can explain how a rocket or a satellite works? Well, rocket is, you know, if I, I showed you that toy, that spinner, I'll just show you once again. Now, this is one small example. A rocket is like a jet, right? There's something going in one direction and pushing it in the other, giving it a thrust in the other direction. And this is what this toy encompasses. Just look at this. Now, there are two holes over here. When I blow, air is ejecting from this hole and giving it a push in the opposite direction. So this explains, it's a kind of example of Newton's third law of motion, that every action is equal and opposite reaction. That's what you see in rocket. In fact, I will suggest, sir, that uh, Narayana students, why don't you devise one or two more toys, you know, which show such kind of motion. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it'll be wonderful, yes. Okay, we can unmute uh, SPS Rajendra wonderful uh, workshop uh, we really loved my favorite was the arithmetic progression in which you showed uh, how two alternative numbers are added and they are the double of the middle number thank you sir thanks thanks now, is, uh, i will also share this book with you it's called as number fun with the calendar it was written by my mentor pk sunivasan he is the one who did more to popularize maths than anyone else in this country. So I will also share this book with uh, Mukul Ma'am. Yeah. In fact, if uh, Mukul Ma'am uh, feels it is right, what we can do is uh, all these kids can create their own low-cost uh, scientific experiments and mathematical funds. And uh, maybe we can, uh, we can have an exhibition and we can invite... Uh, Dr. Arvind Gupta to be there and he can decide who is the winner. So that will be wonderful. Yes. That's great. So, yes. Rajendra Nagar, Rajendra Rajendra Nagar is Nagar. waiting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, really an uh, enjoyable session. I think my personal favorite was the one with the patterns with the calendar and all. So I wanted to ask, like in all the toys involving magnets, you have seen to use uh, ring magnets uh, yes. majorly. Right. So, or like other magnets also exist in other shapes. So, is there any preference for ring magnets? No, ring magnets are, you know, one is that you can use them at many places. They're very low cost. They're still not manufactured in our country. 
Uh, they're all imported from China. But, uh, you know, opposite the, I was in Delhi for 14 years, opposite the Red Fall, uh, there is an electronic market. And where you get a you you get a you get a box of these five thousand magnets, and each magnet is just seventy paisa each, so they are very low cost. And if you can make use the same magnet for many many experiments, you can keep your inventory very very low, right? That's what you, that's what we try to do. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, another question. Yes, I want to ask, sir, what advice would you give to young minds in our country, uh, like who want to pursue pure sciences and B tech degrees after class twelve? No, I think I think uh, you know we must not join the rat race because everyone thinks that you know there is much more money in IT. They gravitate towards this. I think uh, uh, you must you must do what your heart's calling is. Life is to discover what you want to do, right? And you know. You have a right to fail. You may choose a path and fail, but at least you tried. Live your own dream. You have only one life to live. I'm 70 years old, and the only advice I can give you is that as youngsters, dream big and live your own dream. Don't live anyone else's tail dream, be it your principal, your teacher, or your parents. Huh? Live your own dream, and you have a right to fail in that. And discover, you'll discover something else but you'll be much happier in life. Money doesn't make a person happy. Like you need enough to eat, so get a survival wage and do your heart's calling. That's my only small advice. Many a time, sir, we've seen that, uh, I mean, even a gold medalist from IIT may not be able to solve a small problem. And uh, it's, a, it's a lab assistant on somebody who gives an idea that, okay, let's do it like this. So it's not that how educated you are or from which premier institution you are graduating. I think, uh, children, these are your concepts, the basic concepts which matter and your out-of-the-box thinking, which will help you progress, as uh, Mr. Gupta is saying. Yes. Mayur Vihar School? Can we unmute Mayur Vihar? Yes. Yes, you want to ask something, Mayur? May we have students? Yes, sir. So, sir, first of all, it was like a really nice session. Your thoughts kind of mirrored with my thoughts. I always saw science as a way of inquiry. And now you added a new word, playful inquiry. So, sir, but, <laughs> sir, I have one question. I guess so, you observe, we observed a lot of toys. You show us a lot of toys. And they were like really clever toys. But how do you come up with those toys? Like, we have our practical exams also. We have practicals. Can you tell us? How you do the experiment? What is the principle behind the experiment? How does the experiment work? But how would you come up with the experiment? How would you inquire the nature? How would you design something for that? No, I would give I would give children some material, some waste material, and leave it to them. What all toys do, do they come up with? So this is lateral thinking. They've got to put, you know, schools experiments are that's why they're stale. You know the answer beforehand, right? You've got to just write neatly in your practical copies. These are not these are not really inquiry. Inquiry is where you actually apply your mind to the problem, right? And if you solve a real life problem with that, then you're a genius, right? We must encourage children to apply their mind, not just rote learning, not just tail knowledge, but how to be original in your thing. Yes, sir. I also feel like that. Like you know, the process we are having is just of acquiring. Just of acquiring knowledge, not of creating knowledge, receiving the knowledge from an external source. You know, you should create your own knowledge. That is something okay. I think. Okay, we can have a question from Guru Gram School. Good morning, sir. I'm Kritika Sakuja from Salwan Public School, Guru Gram. There's a great saying that intelligent people don't do different things, they do ordinary things differently. On that note, sir, I would like to ask you that what inspired you to lead a career in this particular field and what were the curiosities that led as a child, which led you into making such interesting toys? Thank you. Thank you for this very, very interesting question. I must, my parents never went to school. They never saw the inside of school. But my mother was, now wisdom does not come by a paper degree. It comes from the struggles of life. My mother never asked me, uh, do I have an exam tomorrow or a quiz tomorrow or a test tomorrow? If I was playing or tinkering around, she just let me be. 
she said, oh, this chap is happy doing what he's doing. Let him be. And I think uh, that is the, that is, uh, I was blessed with a happy childhood. Uh, not, not insecure parents who were wanting to push their kids into this or that. The day I left my job, uh, I was in a good job. Uh, my uncles and our uncles who were in very high positions, they, they were very critical. Someday he'd become a general manager of the company. My mother made one statement. And I think that has stuck with me for the last 40 years. I can't thank her enough. So do your heart. I was very privileged. My mother was not, even if I'd gone to an ITI, then IIT, my mother would still love me the same. Right? That's what mothers are meant for. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay, SPS, TDSC, you have a question? First of all, sir, uh, I'd like to thank you for the for this wonderful session. So I had a great time learning all the things and uh, I really appreciated the simple toys and the ingenuity that is present in all of them. But sir, uh, even I appreciate this uh, toy-based learning, but I had a question that as to how can we balance our curriculum with this toy-based learning so that we are able to face the competitive world and the competitive uh, competition that we face in today's time. I, I, do, I don't think I have uh, too many answers to that. Uh, but I feel that until eighth class, hmm, uh, this I'm talking out of experience. For 11 years, we held two free workshops in our center where 50 children from a school would come and work with us for uh, three hours. They would make 15 toys with their own hands and take it back. We realized very soon that after eight, no child was coming to our center because the much larger forces in society, all these ed tech companies, all these coaching shoppies, they, they, they snatch the kids from you. Parents have many insecurities. Now you are in class eight. Now start preparing for NEET or JE. But I feel that up to from fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, five years, it's a very golden period. And if we give children, if we were able to give children a taste as to what great learning is, I hope it would cling to them somewhere in life. That's all. These are much, they're billion dollar companies which are wanting to uh, catch them young, start coaching kids when they are from a nursery today, right? That's what these ed tech companies, stupid companies are doing to our kids. We can't, we can't compete with them. But that's what you thought. So 1,100 great toys, we, we put them into two-minute videos. We thought they should be short, crisp, and into all our Indian languages. So we have 8,700 videos on YouTube in many, many languages. That's a small contribution. We're just three working in a government institute. So our reach, but through the internet, we have been able to reach 100 million children. That's good enough for us. But Dr. Gupta, if I'm uh, correct, because you yourself are an IITian, uh, in, in the advanced paper of IIT, they are actually asking questions which are based on certain principles. So they'll give you an out-of-the-box situation and you have to uh, calculate everything on the basis of that. So man, what you were asking, actually, uh, it's a part of the curriculum itself. It's not that toy-based learning is separate and your curriculum is separate. So uh, the application-based questions you will be able to solve only when you understand the principle, as uh, I think Dr. Gupta was uh, telling about. I think Guru Gram has another question. Sunita, I would like to add on here yes. to this discussion because this is something which the children of class nine onwards always, you know, have uh, been facing. You know, yes. especially recent years when they are having so much pressure of you know entrances and you know career decisions. Yeah. My request to all of you would be, because you will be in the AI world, you know, you will be chugged out of your job or your business if you do not, you know, nurture your creativity. Like Arvindji was telling that till class eight, you are free to do a lot of creativity we see in our school also, in our, your, all of your activities also, all your assignments also. But then unfortunately, you know, after eight to eight, you know, you get into that pressure. Please do not get into that pressure of, you know, doing something uh, yes. for a structured system. 
please focus on your creativity at least once in a week or one hour you can devote in a day also if you can do that to your creativity i'm sure that you will never feel sad or bad and you will discover something new which you know companies like google will appreciate okay so please do not leave the creativity don't come under the, any pressure these are very small as adwit ji was saying only 2 minutes video he is creating so 2 minutes you cannot take out in a day then what you are doing we, we really don't understand so please do that and uh, uh, sunita now i think salwan girls school uh, we should yes yes girls school all right please unmute good morning sir i am shilpi jindal from salwan girls school i really thank you for this wonderful session of toys and sir i want to ask that can really toys help in solving equations also from science well i think you get a you get a better feel i don't think i think mathematics is very very essential to science and but there are certain models mathematical models huh? uh, which you can make mathematical models see if you want to get interested i will give you one example of my mentor professor jain narlik he is a phd from cambridge he is the most decorated indian astrophysicist when he was a child there was a blackboard in the house and he his mama used to live with him who was doing msc in maths and the mama every day on the blackboard one new puzzle he would write and he would tell young narlikar that you've got to solve that puzzle unless you solve it i will not erase it you will not get a new puzzle and in due course he became better and better at solving puzzles mathematical problems so maths is very basic and if it's taught in a fun way it it becomes great look at patterns that's what i gave you one example of uh, of of gauche but uh, all maths and science is essentially looking at patterns in nature patterns in a life not just rote learning that will not take you very far off you think you may even crack the je but then you might be a failure in life right you may land up in a mediocre job and retire with enough money but you will not do no great shakes that's not what god sent you for you got sent you on this earth to do something meaningful to help our fellow citizens right to make life better on earth that you can mukul do mukul ma'am wants to ask a question yeah mukul ma'am thank you sir such such brilliant ideas sir uh, my concern is uh, something uh, different from what uh, we have just heard about toy and fun and science uh, there is too much concern um, regarding the environmental issues these days so while we we become a three trillion economy and there are cop 28 which are not coming up with solutions our children want to give solutions to environmental problems right so can you help us um, understand what we can devise and come up with so that and mama becomes good for us mama our, our toys toys from trash that's what we are famous for with a whole plastic bottle how you can make 100 things many things in science how with a tetra pack you can you can make many many things with a tetra pack i'm just showing now this is a dhara packet or a fruit juice packet i made an eco set we make 60 toys just using old tetra packs so ours is toys from trash it's all about recycling and being green and being easy on nature and not not just dwindling away stuff not frittering away earth's resources but conserving them and doing much more with what we have recycling trash to make joy toys that's a slogan guru gram school what wants to ask what a question what do you say about the smoke and the pollution yes, ma'am That's well, I think I, I think get onto the roads, get to the streets. That's the only way out. It's been there. I spent fourteen years in Delhi, and when I was there, I can tell you if there is a political will at that time, there was so much of particulate matter in the Delhi Delhi air, so much of particulate matter that the government ordered there was a Burelal committee. The government ordered that all public transport would be CNG. and delhi had the largest fleet of cng buses so yes. there is a political will i think then only can it get pushed down but there is a, if there is a slug fest between the center and the delhi government i think much is lost there mm -hmm. yes that's right thank you gurugram school yes this is the last question yes yes ma'am 
Good morning, sir. Thank you for the wonderful session. First of all, I'm Sarah Sethi from Salwan Public School, Gurugram. My question is that modernization has really put a decline in the production of toys as well as the excitement for toys in kids. Uh, what is your say on that? Well, I think uh, there are there are multi billion dollar companies which make toys, all kinds of toys, yeah. and fancy toys, uh, all electronic gadgets. They make more noise than fun. There's so many flashing lights there. I think uh, the definition of toys have changed from generation to generation. I belong to a very different generation, and I believe in the toys like this. And I don't have much trust that these, you know, He Man or Skull Man, huh? they are they are any way more educative. I don't think so, right? I think what children make with their hands is very very essential to make your own toys. You may buy some generic material. You may all occasionally buy a toy from the market. I have nothing. But by and large, make your own toys. Because if you make it, you have much more deeper insights into it. If something goes wrong, you can repair it. If something, if one light stops flicking, you don't know what to do. It You just chuck it into, into the garbage bin. So this is all about modernization. Yes, uh, it was a very interesting yes, discussion, sir. sir. The main highlights which I could uh, gather are like science activities in the middle school are the triggers which can create interest in science. And all the science teachers should try their best to have innovative ideas to explain a concept. Low cost uh, toys are actually an end thing because uh, they can be made anywhere. Like the toys which you spoke about today, they are made from very easily accessible, uh, you know, okay. material. So maybe Mukul ma'am, if uh, this session has been recorded, we should actually show it to our science teachers also, the middle school teachers, so that they can take some inspiration. I was especially uh, excited when I saw your YouTube videos about the matchstick models. I think there's so much that we can do. We can teach angles. We can teach about shapes. We can even teach about how benzene was you know, discovered the structure of the benzene, how it was discovered. So a uh, very interesting session indeed. And uh, two statements, especially, you know, stuck with me. One is that children are not the consumers of the knowledge, but are the sources of knowledge. I think as a teacher, if we realize that we are not the only who have knowledge, half the battle is won, especially in science and maths. We should give a free way to our students to ask questions, to discuss, and maybe come up with some new solutions for the mathematical and the scientific principles. And the second thing that you said was play is a serious business. I, I really resonate with that. And I think we should encourage students, maybe class four onwards, to play with science and do a lot of activities. Interestingly, in the COVID times, we came up with so many experiments which we could do from household things like using haldi as an indicator and other things, pollen and things like that. So uh, it was a very exciting session. Mukul ma'am, uh, uh, maybe Chairman Trust would like to ask something from sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sorry, I, I I was actually sitting in my office watching you, but now I had to leave. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, it was, uh, you know, uh, when you were discussing about your experiments, the way you've been making your lovely toys, I was just reminded of my childhood. And yeah. this is exactly what I want to live about, you know, creating something out of nothing. And uh, what I feel is, honestly, that uh, today's children, today's student, uh, they're missing a lot on life because, uh, and you've very well articulated all your points. And I think it was a great interaction. Even, uh, you know, I just thought that since uh, the first five minutes was so interesting. So I said, no, I'm not going to leave the <laughs> workshop. Let me also attend. Perhaps, uh, you know, my grandchildren subsequently and make toys for them. So... Uh, so, and thank you, sir. And we look forward that whenever you are in Delhi, yes, we would I love do. to have you as a special guest in our schools and interact with children. They will understand the simplicity of life. And you're a true, true Gandhian, I must say that. And you, we, we salute you for this, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Very, very kind words. Thank you. So, um, thank you so much, sir. Such a beautiful session. 
Thank and you. I'm sure Thank every you. child is taking back his or her own personal learning. Thank and you. you will be uh, uh, showered with so many toys now. <laughs> and the next <laughs> book you've written, 27, your 28th book will be with the Salwan children, I'm sure. Uh, great. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we will work for that. And uh, I will I will be uh, in touch with you yes. till we have done that. Thank you so much. It was for a great pleasure, sir. Thing. It was a great pleasure. Peter. Thank you, Sweetheart. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.